Hey guys, it's Samantha Jamerson. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to give you guys tips based off my own experience when I was applying to Physician Assistant School. Physician Assistant School is extremely competitive and hard to get into, but there were certain things that I felt like I did that I was able to put on my resume that made me stand out among my other peers. So if you are interested in learning, please keep watching. So a little background information, if you don't know what a physician assistant is, a PA is a medical professional who is licensed to diagnose, treat, and prescribe medication to patients. When we practice, we just have to be in a contract or an agreement with a supervising physician. So. A little background to me, I originally went to Immaculata University, that's where I got my undergrad degree from, for radiology. I think I wanted to be a radiologist or practice in the radiologic field in some way. And then my second day there, I changed my mind and I decided I wanted to go to med school. So I was pre-med for the first two years and then I believe it was my sophomore or junior year of college that one of my classmates was talking to me and I, I think she was also pre-med if I'm not mistaken and she was in the hospital shadowing and observing other physicians and she said she like met this great PA who reminded um, her a lot of me and she was just so outgoing and so passionate about her career and my classmate knew that I was obsessed with dermatology and she had asked me she was like have you ever heard of what a PA is I think you would be amazing at it and that's when I kind of did some research and looked into what a physician assistant was and I was like wait a minute so I can diagnose treat prescribe medicine to patients it'll be a master's degree so it'll be an additional two to three years after my undergraduate depending on which program I choose um, you know I can go into any area of medicine that I like even though I knew my heart was set on dermatology if I wanted to I could go into family medicine I could go into pediatrics I could go into emergency medicine the thought of being able to switch my career and, and go into a different avenue if I chose to was really appealing so I thought about it a little bit more and then I decided you know what I think a physician assistant is the route that I want to go and, and the, my, my, the dream that I want to pursue after I really gave it some thought. So I did my best in shadowing as many physician assistants as I could just to make sure that that's what I wanted to do. And it turned out, you know, I was right. I did want to pursue this as a career. So after I decided that physician assistant was the career that I wanted to pursue, I then had to go on to all of the programs that I would be applying to and make sure that I met all their prerequisites before I applied. So like I said, a physician assistant is a master's degree. It's a master's of health science in physician assistant studies. So there were a couple other classes that I had to take in order to apply to certain programs that I wanted to potentially go to. So now that you have a little background on what a PA is, let me tell you what I did that I think truly helped me get into PA school to become a physician assistant. So the application process for PAs is called CASPA. So you basically go on, you upload your resume, your transcripts, your letter of recommendations, um, any observing, shadowing hours, everything is uploaded on there. And if I'm not mistaken, back in 2013 at least, CASPA opened every April, like April 15th, I believe. So I knew that after doing all my research for uh, PA and PA schools, PA schools are extremely competitive. I know people may think that med school is more competitive, but I would argue that PA, PA school is uh, slightly more competitive. I remember when I went on my interview for PECOM, the school that I ended up choosing, um, they said, you know, you should be really proud of yourself that you're even here for an interview. They said this to all the people who were interviewing at the time. They said that that year they received close to 3,000 applicants. They pick 100 to be interviewed, which I was one of the 100. And then out of that 100, they were only going to pick 50 students to actually be a part of the class that year. So when you think about those numbers, holy crap, I was terrified. I was like, there's no way they're going to pick me. There are probably so many other better applicants out there. Um, and you know what? I'm sure on paper there were, but I think the key when you get to the interview, which we'll get into a little bit later, is just having confidence and just being passionate and just being real. That's what they wanna see. You can be as amazing as you know you think you are on paper, but they wanna see that personality. They wanna see that enthusiasm when you're going for your interview. The CASPA application. My GPA, I'll just be 100% honest with you guys, was 
good. You could say great or good, but it wasn't amazing. It wasn't perfect. I did not have a 4.0 GPA. I had maybe like a 3.4, 3.5, which is good. I'm not trying to get down on myself for that, but I knew I was competing with people who had 4.0 GPAs. So what I did to really help boost my resume and make me stand out among my peers was I was involved with a lot of things at school. While I was at college at Immaculata University, I was in student government. I was the treasurer of my class. I um, was in a sorority, yes, you probably could have figured that, but I was in a sorority and I played soccer. So I thought, you know, when they're looking at my resume, I hope they can see that not only was I able to be involved with so many things at school, I was also able to maintain a really good GPA. I worked my butt off for that 3.4, GPA. I have never been like a straight A student ever. I'm always that person that, you know, I have paper to write, I'll, I'll write the paper like weeks in advance, I'll go to the writing center at college, yes, there's writing centers, and I would go to them, I would have them proofread it, my paper would be amazing, I would think I would get it back, it would say like, great paper, Samantha, really descriptive, blah, blah, B plus. And I'm like, well, if it's so darn scriptive and so amazing, why aren't I getting A's? Like that was just me, but it's okay. You just have to keep working hard. And for me, it was just really making sure that my resume was beefed up with a lot of other extracurricular things. So it made me stand out. And on top of that, on top of having the GPA and being involved, I worked. I worked in medical records at a family medicine practice, like 15 minutes from my school. So I did that, which was great because I was able to meet four physicians who were amazing and they would let me pop into rooms and shadow and observe. And they were actually, two of them wrote me letters of recommendation. So again, I worked, I was involved at school and I had a good GPA. All of these things are gonna make you look really good when applying to PA school. And then there is the dreaded, I'm sorry guys, but you're gonna have to take them, the GREs. The GREs are this main standardized test that some PA schools require. So I did take them. GREs are not my thing. I think I did average, maybe a little below average on them. So what I did was I sent them to the schools who required it and I did not send it to the schools that did not. Just because I didn't feel like it was gonna help me in any way. So if the school didn't require it, I did not send it. But you will have to take your GREs. Don't stress yourself out too much of it, but you will have to take it. So just study for it, take it, and be done with it. I also recommend that you shadow and observe as many PAs, nurse practitioners, physicians, as many as you can in all different areas of medicine because I think it'll look really, really good when you go and hopefully you get picked for an interview for one of your PA programs and they may ask you, why not become a nurse practitioner? Why not become a physician? I was able to give my reasons because I said, well, look, I shadowed a nurse practitioner and this is why I didn't think it was the right avenue for me. I shadow many physicians. This is why I didn't think it was the right avenue for me. If you have that, it really shows them that you care and you took the time to truly decide that physician assistant was the career for you and not just something that, well, I guess I'll apply to PA school and hopefully I get in. They want people who want to be a PA who want to be at their program. So you need to find ways to prove that to them. So what I did was I shadowed, like I said, PAs, NPs, and MDs, NDOs, um, in every single area of medicine that you can think of. Of course, I did dermatology. I think you guys probably could have figured that out, but I didn't want to only do that because you don't want to be so narrow-minded when it comes to a specialty so early in the game. I didn't want that to be a turnoff. So I shadowed someone in dermatology, um, ears, nose, and throat, radiology, cardiology, primary medicine, urology, pediatrics. I mean, I made sure that I really looked into other areas and with different providers so that I could show them that I took the time and made the effort to really make sure that becoming a PA was, was what I wanted to do. So you have your application done, you've done your GREs, unfortunately, you've um, submitted your transcripts to CASPA, you have your letters of recommendation, you have your ad hours of um, observing and shadowing. If I'm not mistaken, I wanna say you needed like 2000 hours of observing and shadowing, so start them as soon as possible. Um, and then submit that application as early as you can. Another thing that I think really helped me was 
because I submitted in April when it opened. Some people wait, I think it opens in April and closes like that December, January the following year. Some people would wait until then, but it's rolling admission. So what happens is you submit your application like I did in April. They start interviewing, I believe as early as August, September. All of my interviews were in those two months, which was great because when they accepted me or they, they offered me the position there, I accepted, boom, the spot's filled. So if you interview early by submitting your application early, it's gonna give you more of a likelihood that you're gonna get accepted to the program. So please, please, please apply early. I cannot stress that enough. So now let's talk about the interview. So the interview, I was terrified. Oh my God, I don't, I don't think I showed it very well, but I, I was terrified, I was so nervous. I knew the chances of me getting in, especially after those statistics I gave you earlier, I just, I was really, really nervous. So I remember being in my interview, being honest. Um, they asked you a little bit of background about the PA profession, like who, who started the career, who started the, um, the job as a physician assistant, and what year, what was his background. Oh man, putting me on the spot. I wanna say he was a military, like army physician, or uh, that became a physician assistant or something like that in 1967, 68. I actually think I got it wrong on my interview, but I was honest, it was like a year or two off. I wanna say it's 1960 something. Um, so they asked me that, they asked me like why I wanted to be a PA, you know, all, all the things I already basically went over with you. And then I'll never forget, and I really think this helped me out, I was done my interview and they were like, all right, Samantha, you know, so nice to meet you, we'll let you know. They went to go stand up, so there's two people in front of me and I said, can I just say one more thing? And you could tell they looked at me like, what? And I just said, I know you have so many applicants right now that you are going through and I am sure on paper, in terms of my GPA, you have people that stand out um, that may be more compelling to choose over me. But I want this. I want to be a physician assistant and I am sure of it and I have done my research and I have thought about other career paths, but uh, becoming a physician assistant is the career that I want to choose. And if I don't get in this year, then I will be back next year. I will, I will meet with you guys. I will meet with whoever I can to figure out what I can do to get my resume better, to make it more appealing for you because I want to become a physician assistant. I want to become a physician assistant through your program. And I remember they kind of looked at each other and then looked at me and I remember thinking like, I think I just completely completely ruined this interview, they think I'm crazy. But lo and behold, a couple months later, I got a phone call and I got in. So becoming a physician assistant is truly the best career I could have ever asked for, but you need to get into the program in order to graduate, to pass your boards, to become a PA. So I hope these little tips helped a little bit. Um, it's really hard and you have to try to set yourself apart in some way. And hopefully if you follow a couple of things that I did, maybe it'll greater your chances of getting in. And then of course, after every interview, like wait a couple of days, send each individual person who interviewed you a thank you card. That looks super, super classy. And that's what I did as well. Um, so I think that's it. I think those are all the tips I have. If you guys have any other questions for me, please comment below. I love to help especially something that I am so passionate about, if you guys can't tell. All right, I hope you liked this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.